Yes guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm gonna be putting 10 of the most famous football myths to the test. Let's go. So the first myth, if you hit the ball on the valve, it makes the ball go faster. I'm not sure about this one, but I am gonna put it to the test. So I'm gonna hit three shots on the valve, three shots randomly on the ball. I'm gonna calculate with the distance here and the time it takes to reach the goal. If hitting the ball on the valve makes it move faster. It's 19.28 meters. It's quite far actually. Okay, so the results are in and it's a myth. It makes no difference whatsoever. Does wearing small shin pads make you faster and give you more control? Recently, players have been pretty much like ditching the whole shin pad idea for these small little things as opposed to the 90s where players would probably wear a bigger pair of shin pad. But does it make you faster? I'm gonna put them to the test by doing a slalom with the big shin pad and then with a the small shin pad to see if it makes a difference. Let's go. about Dave's button. All right, we got the big center back. Harry Maguire! Chin pads on, let's see how they perform. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> 12 seconds. 12 seconds, okay. Let's put the little ones on. It's mad that like Grealish probably wears his socks to about there. If I was playing in the Prem, like, I don't think I'd feel comfortable going out in those. Especially if you're a skillful winger, like, give me the Maguires. All right, time to channel my inner Jack Grealish. Is it gonna make me faster? Let's put it to the test. Three, two, one, go. I've round about the same. <laughs> okay. We might have to go to VAR. VAR, right, yeah. Let's let's get the final details, but oh, quite tired after that. So the official figures are in, and the smaller shin pads were a tenth of a second faster. That's literally nothing. So there's not really much of a difference. So I think the skill and the control is in the feet. But saying that, I actually understand why skillful players would use smaller shin pads because it does feel a bit lighter. And you know, if you get the ball passed in high up, then you don't want a shin pad in the way. I get it. But scientifically, it don't make a difference. On to the next one. <laughs> Does putting your football boots in the freezer stop them from smelling? It sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? But I've come across this website here that says if you put them in a bag, freeze them overnight, it stops the stench by, I guess, killing the bacteria. Now, I have this problem all the time with my football boots, but also my freestyle trainers. Now, my freestyle trainers smell so badly that I am gonna use these things to put it to the test. So, um, let's do it. 24 hours later and my trainers have been in the freezer for all that time. I must admit I'm a little bit worried that they're going to be destroyed, but <laughs> let's go and see. Okay, a moment of truth. They're intact. <laughs> That's the main thing. Ah, <laughs> oh, they still smell. I mean, I'd say the, the smell has been reduced by like 20%, but yeah. <laughs> Doesn't work. It's a myth. It's not true. Do not put your boots or your trainers in the freezer. There you go. I'm a football freestyler and a lot of people think that tricks are easier with a flatter ball or air taken out of the ball like this. So to put this to the test, I'm going to do one of my favourite tricks, which is actually quite difficult, and see how many attempts it takes with a flat ball and how many attempts with a full pumped up ball. Let's do it. Hey! Second try. That'll do. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna attempt to do the same trick, but this ball is gonna be pumped up to the absolute maximum. Yeah, that'll do. Fully pumped up ball. One. Two. Yes! 
So there we go. Two attempts with the flat ball, seven attempts with the pumped up ball. So for me, the myth was correct. A flat ball definitely helped me. But I do know freestylers that use a pumped up ball. So I think it really is the ball that you are used to and that you train with more often. Let me know what you think. Just a quick one. So you may have noticed recently players like Jude Bellingham, Carl Walker, Jaden Sancho cutting holes in the socks. Apparently it makes you run faster, circulation goes faster. I don't know. I've tried it for a few minutes, but for me, nah, I'm not having it. Doesn't work. Let me know your thoughts. Does putting your boots in hot water actually make them more comfortable? Now this myth has been around for years, but I think it was made more famous by Cristiano Ronaldo, who used to do this quite a lot. And then everyone just started trying it and copying it. I've never tried it, but I'm gonna use a pair of boots right here that they're not the most comfortable, if I'm honest. They cause me a lot of pain when I'm playing, so maybe this will make a difference. So I'm actually gonna sit here for about 20 minutes, half an hour, let them mold. I mean, the idea here is that the heat makes the materials expand and then kind of mold to your feet, which makes them more comfortable. Let's put it to the test. <laughs> it actually feels so nice, actually. It's just like having a bath for your boots. <laughs> it's very cool. All right, so I've just taken the boots out of the hot water and they do feel more comfortable. However, they're soaking wet through, so I wouldn't want to play a game in soaking wet through boots. So I'm going to wait 24 hours, dry them off, and then revisit to see if they're still as comfortable. Ah, so I've given it more than 24 hours to dry these things out. To be honest, guys, I don't think it worked. They've dried out, they've gone back to the way they were. I don't think there's much difference at all. It does make them more comfortable while they're wet and warm, but I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to be playing a game in like soaking wet boots because they just make them heavier. So what's the actual point? All in all, you can try it, give it a go. I think there's better ways to get used to your boots. Just wait a couple of weeks and wear them in properly. Yeah. Does putting Vaseline on your goalkeeper gloves give you better grip? I don't know, let's put it to the test. Okay, we're gonna do some shots. Normal gloves, no Vaseline, just to test the grip. Then we're gonna put the Vaseline on to see if there's a difference. Dead easy. Vaseline on the gloves. Let's see if it makes a difference. I don't know if this is actually allowed, by the way, but imagine if it makes them worse. We're gonna have shots with the exact same balls, exact same distances, but can I hold on to the ball better? Verdict on this myth, I think, even though it's hard to scientifically prove this, putting Vaseline on your gloves actually helps your grip. It definitely helped me, just a little bit. Does more expensive equipment make you a better player? I'm gonna test this out. 20 pounds for boots and ball, 300 pounds for boots and ball. So to put these products to the test, I'm gonna do a roll, strike, and see how many attempts it takes me to hit the top bins. We're gonna start with the expensive pair of boots. These are like pro-worn predators worth over 200 pounds. These are very nice boots. And then the ball I'm gonna use is the Aurela, which is literally the official World Cup ball, the most high-tech, probably the best ball ever created to this day. So let's see what happens. Nine. <laughs> Nine attempts with the more expensive outfit. Let's put the cheaper one on. They're not bad to be fair. I actually like black boots. I think they're cool. I'm going first time. I think these are great. <laughs> I've not hit the shot yet, but. And 11 attempts, not too bad. So I guess I was more consistent in the more expensive gear, but 
I actually don't think there's much of a difference in this. I think the main difference is the quality. These things will last you way longer than the cheaper pair, but as ever, the skill is in the player. The shirt sales pay for players. There is a common belief that when a club signs a big name that they will get their money back pretty quickly on shirt sales. But is this really true? Well, after doing a little bit of research, it's actually a lie. The manufacturers of the shirts, so you likes of Adidas, Nike and Puma, actually pay each club a license agreement up front and then take 85 to 90% of the shirt sales revenue. But this percentage only usually kicks in once an agreed amount of shirts have been sold. This will still generate income for the club, usually about £6 per shirt, but if the player is costing towards the £100 million mark and receiving millions in wages per year, it will take a lot of shirt sales to cover it. So for example, for Manchester City to pay off Jack Grealish's transfer with shirt sales, everyone in the United Kingdom would have to buy 10 of their shirts, which is probably not going to happen. Final myth, do grip socks make you faster and more agile? So to test this out, I've put a little drill here to test my agility and I'm gonna do it first up with some normal socks on, take the time, and then with the grip socks on to see if there's a difference. Three, two, one, go. So normal socks, I got 8.4. I'm shattered. <laughs> now I'm gonna put the grip socks on. But the reason people think you are faster and more agile is obviously these things have grip inside. So yeah, I'm curious myself to see whether this makes a difference. Let's put them on. You can feel a difference to be fair though. Like even just putting them in, you can feel how that just doesn't move at all. Three, two, one, go. How much faster was it? Just less than half a second faster. So I was half a second faster in the grip socks. That's absolutely ridiculous. And I tried my absolute hardest. I'm not the fastest in the world, but I tried my hardest to do this course. Unreal. So it's not a myth. Get yourself a pair of grip socks. So there you go, 10 of football's biggest myths tested. Some are real, some aren't. But if you enjoyed this, check out this video here where I try and recreate some of the rarest moments in football. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.